Hello Internet World, welcome. Welcome to a new video on the Geek and Noise channel. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing and giving you my opinion about a different sort of NAS, a rack mount NAS that's very affordable. Uh, QNAP very kindly sent me in free of charge one of their newest products. Uh, this is the TS451DEU. I can't wait to show you it. Uh, a NAS device, first of all, just to let you know, is network attached storage. It allows you to install hard drives into the unit, connect the NAS to your network, and then have access to those files on multiple devices. You could access the files on your desktop computer, on a laptop computer, on a tablet, on a smartphone, remotely from the other side of the world. Uh, so many different uh, use case scenarios. And I wanna show you the actual hardware and let you know how I've been getting on with it. Now, before I do that, I do just want to let you know that uh, I've been using these Toshiba drives in uh, this particular NAS. They're the N300s. Uh, they're specifically designed to use in a, a NAS device. They are designed to run uh, sort of 24-7 and they've been working superbly for me. Uh, I use the N300s in pretty much all of my NAS drives now and I'm very, very impressed with them. So anyway, back to the review. This is the um, four, TS451DEU from QNAP. This is the top sort of section of the NAS. Uh, inside the box you get the NAS itself. I will show you the other bits you get as well. You get a little box of goodies included. You get a five year warranty, so really good backup. You also get some warranty information. You get a quick installation guide and it really is easy to set these up. It's just a matter of installing your hard drives, connecting to your network, using a little bit of software called QFinder Pro to actually locate the NAS, and then you can go through the actual uh, very easy to use installation wizard. You also get a box of screws for mounting the hard drives. Uh, you also get some, uh, what looks like little extra heat sinks in there as well. Uh, we also get some more screws. Uh, these are to attach these sort of uh, wings you attach these to the side of the device and it allows you to rack mount it. Of course you could use it on a desk if you wanted to, but it's really designed to be rack mounted. Uh, you get some, I'm not even sure what these are actually, never ever use these. Uh, they're probably some sort of cable management, uh, but never use those. And I've also been using my own uh, ethernet cables, but you do get supplied inside the box uh, two ethernet cables. Uh, I use these flat ethernet cables myself, highly recommended much easier to run underneath the equipment as well. Anyway, back to the actual uh, NAS device itself. Now inside, let's just give you a little bit of the spec. This has got a dual core 2 gigahertz Celeron processor. Uh, it's also uh, got uh, dual M.2 uh, SSD slots as well. Uh, this allows caching and just increases uh, sort of performance and access times. If I show you the back panel, it's a hefty device, so let's show you the back panel. Uh, albeit I think I've got this upside down for you guys. Let's turn it around to the right way very carefully. So we've got an array of ports across the back. Let's start from left to right. We've got a little tiny reset switch in this uh, left hand corner here. A couple of USB 2 sockets, little tiny fan, USB 3 sockets. We've got two Ethernet ports here. Now you can get up to 5 gigabits per second transfer speeds. Uh, by setting port trunking uh, on these two sockets. These support up to 2.5 gigabits per second each. Uh, then we've got another little fan, Kensington uh, slot for Kensington lock, so if you want to tether it down to a desk. And then we've got another little fan and then the input for the uh, power cord. The power supply is built in, so there's no external power brick. So that's the back. The reason we've got fans, of course, is to keep the hard drives and all the internals uh, running nice and cool. Then if we go onto the side, not a lot to see on the side really, uh, other than we've got some sort of mounting points. And then if we go right the way around onto the front, so this is what you're gonna see in your rack or on your desk. Uh, we've got a power button, we've got an array of LED uh, lights here to give you some status feedback. And then we've got the four bays. This is a four bay uh, NAS device. Uh, these come out really easily, like so. No drives in at the moment, purely because I've uh, sort of decommissioned this for the review. 
two and a half inch mounting points in here as well so you can put two and a half inch solid state drives I've been using this just with two bays populated with those Toshiba N300s and they just mount in the normal in the normal way with the outer mounting screws and then these just slot back in they self locate onto the uh, SATA connections at the back and when they're pushed all the way in like so you just clip those back down into place and uh, not lockable on this one some NAS devices you've got little key locks these aren't lockable but of course you've got four I'm not going to take all of these out but you've got four separate bays in total so you can populate this with up to four drives that gives you a really uh, large capacity now uh, this is really fully featured it provides comprehensive backup and data recovery uh, lots and lots of apps that you can install on it you could use it if you're not using it for work you could use it for home use with a Plex media server if you're using it for work you could you, you could actually host host multiple uh, virtual machines on here as well uh, so many different use case scenarios now size wise this is really designed as I mentioned before to fit into a rack and if you're putting it in a rack it's uh, good to know that this uh, is just 11.57 uh, inches or 295 millimeters deep from front to back so it's quite a, a, a shallow device um, it's really good very very space saving uh, and really easy to deploy uh, as I mentioned before you can install those sort of rail guides on the side now transfer speeds uh, you're gonna get round about if you're installing sort of standard hard drives in here uh, sort of up to 470 ish megabytes per second on the read speed and I was getting around about 420 megabytes per second on the write speed which I think is more than acceptable you, you can get slightly faster it depends on how you got this configured I wasn't using the two uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet uh, connections I was using a slower connection uh, but alas I was still getting good good speeds now inside uh, you need to sort of lift the uh, panel off is where you're going to install the two M.2 2280s uh, this allows for uh, cache acceleration and auto tiering as well uh, there's plenty of different features on here as well Windows and Mac backup you can do snapshots of your data virtual machine backup so so much more besides and these are really easy to uh, actually uh, deploy so if you need to add extra ones like an extra four bays extra eight bays uh, extra 12 bays for example you can do that uh, Plex is something that um, a lot of you have asked me about using Plex I haven't delved into Plex myself I mainly use these let's pick this up oh it is hefty uh, this is one of the reasons I removed the hard drives because with the hard drives in it's even heavier um, but I've been I mainly use my NAS devices for archiving and accessing my video footage as you know on Geekanoids I produce a lot of videos uh, let me just uh, get my notes up here uh, I produce a lot of videos and I use my uh, NAS devices for archiving the video footage off so that I can easily retrieve it if I need to use it in another project apart from the videos I do here on Geekanoids I do commercial videos for other clients as well so I have to keep a lot of footage in, ca in case that footage needs to be reused in future projects. So there's lots and lots of video footage as you can imagine. I think in total I'm up to about, I think it's about 48 terabytes of storage across all of my NAS devices. So a lot of storage. Uh, this is being used personally for a dedicated uh, project uh, with another 16 terabytes in. And then I've still got two expansion bays that I can expand that even further to. Apart from just sort of uh, storage of files, you can do a lot more with these NAS devices. You can install apps on them, uh, things to do uh, like backups, uh, act as media servers, uh, file servers, mail servers, etc. Uh, even sort of photo backup as well from your smartphone to the, the NAS device. So there's so much more you can do besides just storing files on. And the fact that they connect via Ethernet as I mentioned at the beginning of this video means that the files you store on this are accessible uh, via your other computers on your network wired or wirelessly so it's a really flexible setup and the fact that this installs into a rack um, makes it a very useful device as well for putting it into a professional sort of rack setup 
uh, alongside other equipment. Uh, so not really targeted towards home use, although you could use it in home use, targeted towards small office, uh, medium and larger sort of uh, enterprise installations as well. So that is it for my review. Can I recommend this? I certainly can. It's worked extremely well. The user interface is absolutely brilliant. I've shown you that in my previous reviews. Uh, the QNAP interface has evolved over time and it allows you to configure this with ease. So very, very highly recommended uh, system. So thanks for watching everybody. I can see plenty of you inside the live chat. Thanks for tuning in live. We've got Craig, Greenzap, uh, Tom and Raymond. Thanks for tuning in live guys. I really do appreciate it. If you want to pick up one of these for yourself, there's a link down below to the QNAP website where you can check this out on their other models in the range. There's also links to where you can actually purchase this. Uh, so please do check those out. If you're new to the channel, I always say this, but please do subscribe. I publish new tech videos pretty much every single day. And one last thing, if you enjoyed the video, share a link to it, hit the like button. I really do appreciate it. Have a fantastic weekend ahead and I'll see you in another video very, very soon.